Welcome to our video program on improving motivation and compliance. It is designed to help you recover from substance abuse or dual disorders. Motivation refers to your desire to change your behavior. In the case of substance abuse, motivation is needed to stop using drugs or alcohol and change your life. With mental health problems, motivation is needed to cope with the symptoms of your disorder. Now, part of your recovery should focus on understanding how motivation shows in your behaviors and attitudes, factors that influence it, and how you can cope with periods of low motivation. Now, a key to recovery is working hard to maintain your motivation, especially in times of difficulty. Compliance refers to keeping your treatment appointments, taking medication as prescribed, attending self-help meetings, and following through with your individualized recovery plan. Now this means making the changes that you and your counselor identify as part of your plan to deal with your problems. Good compliance will reduce your risk of relapse. If you are compliant, you are less likely to need a higher level of care, such as a psychiatric hospital or addiction rehabilitation program. Compliance will lead to improvement in your life and overall satisfaction with your recovery plan. It puts you in a good position to deal with motivational struggles or life problems that can create stress for you. Each segment of this video program dramatizes common problems related to motivation and compliance. Viewing and discussing these will help you develop strategies to improve your motivation and ability to comply with treatment and your change plan. This first part focuses on compliance with aftercare following completion of a residential or inpatient program and compliance with outpatient sessions and recovery assignments. As you watch these stories, pay attention to what you think, how you feel, and ways you can handle these situations to improve your motivation. If you've been in these situations in the past, remember what helped you cope with them. Focus on solutions to motivation and compliance problems. What are your thoughts now that you're just a few days from finishing our program, Dylan? Well, you know I had a rocky start, but uh, mm. once my attitude changed, I, I, I feel like I've gotten a lot out of the program. That's true. You did have a difficult beginning, but to your credit, you hung in there and you made the best of your time here. I'm glad it was beneficial to you. Now, I wanted to take some time and talk to you about your plans for aftercare after you leave rehab. Tell me about what you're going to do to stay sober and how you're going to make the changes that you've said you need to make. Well, I'm definitely going to get hooked up with the sponsor. And hey, I mean, I'm going to meetings. And given that you have stopped going to meetings in the past, what are you going to do differently this time, Dylan? I'm going to go to meetings regularly, be disciplined, uh, I'm going to make meetings a part of my week. I'm, I'm not going to make excuses for not going. And if you do catch yourself making excuses, wanting to blow off meetings, what then? What would you do? Well, that's an interesting question. <laughs> I, I like to believe that uh, it won't happen again. It could happen again. But... Um, that's when I really need to stay connected to the others in the program. Uh, there are some people that I'm definitely going to have to avoid to keep from feeling pressure to get high. Um, and I really need to work at not getting bored. But overall, I, I feel like I have a, a pretty good plan for my aftercare. You didn't mention aftercare counseling. What about that? You didn't mention it at all. I think counseling could be good for you. It would give you some people to talk to about your recovery, any problems that might pop up. 
Yeah, okay, I know I should probably go, but I, I think I'm going to try and maybe not do counseling this time. I mean, you know all the trouble I had at the clinic last time I went. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. What do you think the problem was, and what do you think caused it? My counselor kept telling me what to do all the time. I mean, there was a couple times when he told me I was headed back to relapse. I mean, he hasn't been through what I've been through. I mean, how can he try and understand me? You didn't get any benefits from counseling. And weren't you also in an aftercare group? Yeah. Group was a hassle, too. I mean, if you, if you show up a few minutes late, then they won't let you in. If you miss a session, then, man, they really get on you. I mean, it's, it's not like I had all this free time to go to a group meeting every single week. I don't know. I mean, I, I got really tired of, of, of all the BS from some of the other members in the group. I mean, <laughs> there are some people in there who are not serious about recovery. <sighs> to be truthful with you, I really don't think I got that much out of it. I like N.A. better. It sounds like you want to get more from your aftercare counseling than you did before, Dylan. What can you do differently to make the experience more worthwhile? Well, <clears throat> I guess I could try to stick it out for a couple of months and give it a chance. But do I really have to go to counseling? That is a decision only you can make. I can give you my opinion, but the choice is up to you. Yeah, but it's a tough decision. You know I want to stay off drugs. I, I just really think that I, that I can do it without going through counseling. I just need to, to learn to apply the things that I learned in rehab. It's a tough but very important decision, Dylan. Why don't we talk about what you don't like about aftercare counseling and then we can discuss the potential advantages. And that way you will have more information on which to base your decision. Things could be different, but a lot depends on how you look at it. Well, you know the things that I, that I don't like. The only thing is, is that I, I, I just get so tired of talking about my drug problem all of the time. True. But can you see any advantages into going into aftercare counseling? I'm home. Anybody here? Hi, Ann. Hi. Hmm. Hey, how about some pasta tonight, huh? That sounds great. How was your day? Oh, it was very busy, but it was good. I got a lot done. Good. How about you? What was your day like? Uh, I tell you, by my last class session, I was ready to come home. I swear to God, half those kids are hyper. Yeah, but you love it. You're such a good teacher. Did anybody call? Yeah, your mom called, you know, just a chat. And, uh, your therapist, Brad, called. He, something about rescheduling a, a session? I, I thought you were still seeing him. Well, I've been kind of busy lately, and I missed my last few appointments. You know, to be honest, I've been doing so well, I don't think I need therapy anymore. Well, that's funny, because just last month, I thought you were saying how much you were enjoying the sessions and how much you were getting out of therapy. What's changed? I just got tired of going every week. You know, I've been doing really well these past four months. This is the best I've ever done. I just think I can handle things on my own now. Yeah, well, don't you think you should at least call him and, and talk about ending the sessions? I mean, uh, what would he say? Well, he'd probably tell me I should stick with the therapy a couple more months, but that's just because it's his job. You know, at some point, I'm going to have to quit relying on a therapist, so why not now? I don't know, honey. I mean, I'm worried about you. Don't get me wrong, it's not that I question your judgment or anything, but I just don't want to run the risk of you falling into depression again. What? I've done so well. I know, and that's exactly why you shouldn't stop going to therapy yet. I mean, 
Bonnie, come on, do us both a favor and talk to your therapist first. Maybe he can reschedule things and, and see you less often and do something to make you work toward an end. I mean, I just don't want to run the risk of making a hasty decision. Well, you do agree, don't you, that my moods have been a whole lot more even? Yeah, yeah, you're doing great. I'm just remembering the family meetings, and they said that you shouldn't quit taking therapy until you've at least talked to your therapist first or, or someone who knows you real well. I mean, if you want my opinion, you're not ready to quit taking treatment yet. Well, you know, I really appreciate your concern, Bob, but I just see things differently. I don't think I need therapy anymore. And you know what? Things are so crazy at work. I, I really don't have time to schedule these sessions anyway. Okay, I still wish you'd just reconsider and talk to your therapist first. I don't know. He'll probably just tell me the same thing you just said and want me to continue in treatment. Damn it, what have you got to lose by sticking with it a while longer? Don't you care how I feel? I mean, it's not like I think you're going to go downhill overnight, but I'm just saying that I don't think you're ready to stop treatment yet. How would you know when I should stop? You know, you've never had to deal with depression and seeing a therapist who gets inside of your head. 